Hello and welcome to another video lecture from MrWatkins.com. Uh, this particular video is going to be a, a general discussion of the uh, receptors and receptor classifications. We're talking about sensory receptors here um, and so please note I probably will be stopping and starting this video as we go through but um, let's just jump right in here. We've got sensory receptors and those sensory receptors, basically what those are, they are specialized um, receptors that respond to changes in the environment. And these changes, these things that happen, are typically called stimuli. Someone touches you, you hear a sound, you see something. And uh, we divide those things, these type of receptors up. We can classify uh, the receptors by their properties and we can classify the receptors by the stimulus type that they pick up. So the receptor classes are name classified by how they um, are stimulated. Uh, there are five of those classifications. So let me just write those down here real quick. So here we go, we're gonna write them down. The first one is a mechanoreceptor. Now, a mechanoreceptor, um, they generate a nerve impulse. So let's kind of talk about what we're talking, what, what's going on here. This receptor, the sensory side of the nervous system, so we're in the peripheral nervous system, you're going to pick up some stimulus from the environment. And that stimulus then gets transmitted via, via an impulse through an afferent neuron or a sensory neuron to the central nervous system. Whether it goes through a reflex arc and comes back out the efferent side or whether it goes on up to a higher association center in the central nervous system, um, that's not what we're dealing with here. But what we're going to be talking about is the piece that takes it from that stimuli back to that central nervous system. So a mechanoreceptor here is a generates a nerve impulse when the actual receptor or the tissues around it are deformed by some type of mechanical force like I touch a particular uh, like piece of skin that's going to deform the skin it's going to stretch it's going to put pressure on that skin and that's going to cause these sensors um, to move or to change excuse me send a signal uh, to the central nervous system so this is deformation by mechanical by mechanical means and by that I mean by a physical change and so that could be touch it could be pressure it could be um, vibration it um, could be um, stretching it so any of those things that would deform these uh, particular receptors, cause them to change their shape, that would cause a signal then to be sent via a sensory uh, neuron to the central nervous system. Another type of sensory receptor, if you're going to classify them by the type of stimulus that they receive, that second type is going to be a thermoreceptor. Now your thermoreceptor it's exactly as it sounds. Thermo means heat. We're talking about temperature here. You get a change in temperature. And the temperature change in the environment, that stimulus gets picked up, and that temperature change um, is then, the signal is then sent down that sensory neuron back to the central nervous says, hey, it's got hotter, it's got colder, those kind of things. The third type here are photoreceptors. And photoreceptors, these are going to be ones that, just like the word says, photo, that pick up stimulus um, from light energy. So we're looking at light. Now you can imagine what we're talking about here. We're talking about the receptors that are on your retina that pick up the different variations in light intensity, light energy, and transmit that down that optic nerve, number two on the cranial nerves, back to the central nervous system so they can be decoded in a higher association center. Uh, the fourth type here are chemoreceptors. And a chemoreceptor, 
These respond to a change in chemicals in the environment. Now this can be an odor. You put on some perfume, the chemical that's that perfume gets into the air. It changes the makeup of the chemicals that your nose is picking up. And that change is picked up by these chemoreceptors, sends the information down the olfactory nerve, that sensory uh, neuron, that afferent neuron, back to a higher association center uh, for processing. So these chemoreceptors um, are basically going to be smell or taste. Smell or taste. Um, this is also part of the chemical sense uh, part of the sensory system. And then the last one is uh, nosial receptors, and I'm horrible at spelling them it's, uh, or saying it, but let me uh, put it out here for you so that you can uh, see it here. And these things, this noci, noci here, N O C I, that means pain. That word means pain in Greek. And so these things uh, pick up stimulus that can damage or could cause damage. And it, the resulting signal or the resulting association center, the, the transformation of that is that there is pain. And uh, the examples here could be uh, searing heat, such as touching a hot burner on the stove, um, extreme cold. It's so cold it burns, it hurts. Um, these signals stimulate other signals, such as a, a noce receptor can stimulate other subtypes of these thermoreceptors, uh, mechanoreceptors, or chemoreceptors. Okay, so this is dividing these things out, classified by stimulus. Now we can also classify uh, receptors according to their um, their location or their location as far as activating a stimulus. And there are uh, just a few of those. So let me grab the page here so I can do it right, spell it correctly. The first one here for this is going to be, and this is classification of the receptor by the location. So the first of this is going to be an exterior scepter. And this one's classified. They are sensitive to stimulus from outside the body. Okay, So the stimulus comes outside the body. All right. These things include touch, pressure, pain, temperature. Most of the receptors that you find in your skin um, are going to be this type of receptor because they're picking up stimulation that occurs outside, outside of the body. Um, you could also have uh, these receptors. I mean, think about this. Eyesight, sense of vision, hearing. The stimulus has occurred outside the body. So if you have something that's outside the body, you also would have receptors that pick up the stimulus inside the body, and that's how you can classify it. And so the stimulus is inside, comes from inside the body. And um, this is such as, uh, this thing would be things like monitoring um, stimuli, like chemical changes in the blood. Uh, tissue stretches that occur inside. Your stomach gets distended because you ate too much. Um, sometimes they can cause us to feel pain. Sometimes they can cause us to feel hunger. You didn't. You, you ate too much. Your stomach, you just feel bloated. It kind of hurts a little bit. Um, or you haven't eaten for a while and you're just really hungry. That could also do it as well. Um, usually, we're not aware of some of these Enter receptors. Um, blood glucose level drops to a certain point. We may not be physically aware of that, but there is this receptor uh, system inside our body that helps counteract 
or helps respond, excuse me, to that stimulus. And then the third type of, if we classify it by location, is proprioception. Now these are, they're, they're like the interoceptor. They respond to an internal stimulus, but these things, they're, they're, where they're located is actually kind of, it's, it's really restricted. These receptors occur in skeletal muscles, tendon joints, and ligaments. So let me go ahead and write this down. They're, they're like interoceptors, and, but, but they're really only found in very specific places in the body. And those things would be skeletal muscle. Um, you might find it in a tendon or joint. Um, ligaments, connective tissues on bones. Um, some people include the uh, equilibrium receptors that you find in the vestibulococular, that you know, the vestibulococular conchlear, um, nerve is responsible for. And quite frankly, these receptors constantly tell your head, your brain, where our body is and about our body movements. They monitor how much uh, the organs that we move around are, are, are changed so that we have an idea of where we are in space, such as being able to sit without you know, having to necessarily look at it. You can actually say, okay, the chair's there, back up, sit down. You know where your muscles are in space. That's basically um, how we classify uh, these types of receptors. Now, I'm going to get into a little different classification in the next um, little video that I'm going to do here, uh, but this is the two basic ways that you need to uh, understand how we classify this sensory receptor system. You need to make sure that you know these vocabulary words, absolutely, um, and you should find them also in your book. That's it.